Hi, this is David Voss, CCIE 11372, and in this video you're going to learn about routing protocol fundamentals. Now this may seem like a topic you would expect to see on a CCNA exam, and, and that would be true, but the new Cisco CCNP version requires that you revisit the basics to make sure you have the foundational knowledge needed to cover the more advanced topics found in the CCNP. So in this video, you're going to specifically review what basics that Cisco wants you to know for the CCNP IP routing exam. In this video, there are two primary concepts you're going to learn. First, you're going to learn about the role of routing on an enterprise network. We will review the six tiers of the enterprise network architectural model, and then you're going to specifically revisit the characteristics of routing protocols. On the CCNP exam, Cisco specifically wants you to understand the advantages and disadvantages of choosing a routing protocol. So let's begin. Routing occurs when a layer 3 device makes a forwarding decision based on network address information. The big question is where does that information come from? Now a router can know how to reach a network by simply being connected to it or perhaps even using static routes, but Obviously, that's not going to work well for larger networks or actually even for smaller ones. Using static routes just is not ideal and it does not scale. Dynamic routing protocols allow routers configured for that protocol to exchange route information and update that information based on the changing network conditions. Before we review the specifics of routing protocols, we need to first review what Cisco wants us to know regarding the enterprise network. The first three layers of the enterprise network are found within the campus network. First you have building access. This layer is used to provide user access to the network. Security is very important at this layer to verify that the user should actually be on the network. And layer 2 switching is typically used at this layer in conjunction with VLANs. Then you have the building distribution layer which actually aggregates the building access switches and multi-layer switches are often used here that is layer 2, layer 3. And then finally you have the campus backbone. All of the distribution switches are then uplinked to the core and this is where you will find your high-speed switches for the high-speed transfer of data through the network. And high-end multi-layer switches are normally found here. So let's go ahead and walk through the enterprise network. Here you will see the access layer switches. So this is the building access layer. Servers, IP phones connect into these access layer switches. These are then connected into the building distribution layer. And again, this is a part where they aggregate the access layer switches and multi-layer switches are normally found here. These distribution switches are then redundantly uplinked to the campus backbone. And this layer, again, has is where the high-speed transfer of data through the network occurs and high-end multi-layer switches are normally found here. The campus network doesn't live in isolation. There are three other layers you need to be aware of which allow the campus network to communicate with other entities. First there's the edge distribution layer. This layer is still a part of the campus network but it serves as the ingress and egress point for all traffic into and out of the campus network. Routers or multi-layer switches are appropriate devices for this layer. Then you have your internet gateways, and this has routers which connect the campus network out to the internet. Now, some enterprise networks have a single connection to the internet, while others have multiple connections to two different internet service providers, and that's where BGP will come into play. And then you have WAN aggregation layer, which contains routers that connect the campus network out to remote offices. Now, enterprises use a wide variety of WAN technologies, but one of the most popular today is MPLS. But please note that Cisco still wants you to know quite a bit about frame relay on the CCMP exam. But that topic will be covered in a later video. So let's walk through these next three layers. First, you have the edge distribution layer. And again, it's a part of the campus network, but it serves as the ingress and egress point for all traffic in and out of the campus network. Now one of the uplinks from this distribution layer are the internet gateways. And this layer contains routers that obviously connect the campus router, the campus network out to the internet. And some, some companies have a single connection to the internet. Some companies have multiple. Here you see multiple connections to two separate providers out to the internet. And that's where BGP would be used. And then finally, 
connecting into the edge distribution is the WAN aggregation. The WAN aggregation is a layer that contains routers which connect the campus network out to the remote offices. Enterprises use a variety of WAN technologies here. One of the most popular is MPLS, but Cisco still expects you to know quite a bit about Frame Relay, which will be covered in a later video. Now, you can see why using static routes would not be an ideal solution for supporting an enterprise network. Routing protocols are needed. They are used within the campus network and within the WAN aggregation layer to provide real-time reachability information. In the campus network and the wide area network, the typical protocols used are RIP, OSPF, and EIGRP, with the latter two being the most popular by far, and we'll explain why that is in a minute. When connecting out to the internet, Border Gateway Protocol, or BGP, is usually the protocol of choice for enterprises having more than one internet connection. Now please note it's an emerging trend to connect a campus to remote offices over the internet, as opposed to the traditional WAN technologies. You would still use routing protocols in most cases, but obviously when you're cutting costs sending data over the internet, you're incurring additional costs to make sure that data is secure. But when data is encrypted and secure, you're free to use interior gateway protocols such as OSPF and EIGRP over these secure tunnels. So yes, over the internet. For the CCNP exam, Cisco wants you to be able to identify the attributes of routing protocols so that you can make the correct design decisions. The fundamental question is, which routing protocol should you use? When answering that question, you must keep in mind the following characteristics of routing protocols. And Cisco wants you to remember all of these. First is scalability. How large is your network now? How large will it become? This is important because there are versions of RIP, or actually all versions of RIP, have a maximum hop count of 15 routers. OSPF and EIGRP scale much better, and BGP is the primary routing protocol used on the internet, so obviously it scales very well, and many companies, in fact, use BGP internally for that reason. Vendor interoperability. Will you be using all Cisco routers on your network, or will it be a blend of Cisco and non-Cisco? Why is that important? Well, RIP and OSPF work fine regardless of vendor, and now even Cisco has taken steps to ensure EIGRP can be used by any networking vendor. The question is, do they support it? RIP and OSPF and BGP most likely, EIGRP maybe or maybe not by non-Cisco vendors. IT staff's familiarity with the protocol. You and the IT staff at your company might be much more familiar with one routing protocol over another. I worked at a company where we had an internal debate over EIGRP versus OSPF. And the tipping point for the conversation was what protocol do the engineers already know or want to learn better? It was OSPF. And therefore, that's what we went with as far as our design decision. That was the tipping point. You will have the same debates internally and should be prepared for this in your decision-making process. Speed of convergence. A benefit of dynamic routing protocols over static routes is the ability for dynamic routing protocols to reroute around network failures. When this failure occurs, the network recalculates and reaches a steady state condition. This is called the state of being a converged network. The amount of time for the failover to occur is called the convergence time. Now some routing protocols have faster convergence times than others. This is important because when a network is not in a steady state, data can be dropped or looped within the network. You should know that because RIP and BGP might take up to a few minutes to converge. By contrast, OSPF and EIGRP can converge in just a few seconds. The capability to perform summarization. Large enterprise networks can have routing tables with many route entries and network summarization allows multiple routes to then be summarized into a single route advertisement. So it reduces the number of entries in a router's routing table that eats up less memory and also CPU because it reduces the number of network advertisements that need to be sent. And that can obviously increase convergence time as well. Here's a perfect example. Let's say we're looking at the routing table of a core router and it knows about all the branch offices. And let's say there are 255 branch offices and each are allotted a slash 24 and they're assigned a 192.168.x.0.24 uh, network. Now, sure, the core router has 
individual entries for all of these routes and knows how to reach all of them through separate interfaces or tunnels. But all of these routes do not need to be passed individually throughout the network onto a neighbor through a route advertisement. They can be summarized using one summary route, 192.168.00 slash 16. So as you can see, using summarization, we're saving a lot of memory and CPU by simply summarizing all of these routes um, into one single route. Interior or exterior routing. A key term you need to understand is AS, which stands for Autonomous System. And this is a network under a single administrative control. A network might be a single AS, and when it connects to, let's say, another network, let's say an internet service provider, then it's connecting to a separate AS. When you're selecting a routing protocol, you need to determine, is it running inside your network, or will you be running it with somebody outside of your network? To answer the question as to what routing protocol you should run, you need to understand if you need an IGP, an interior gateway protocol, or a EGP, an exterior gateway protocol. An IGP exchanges routes between routers in a single AS. Common IGPs are EIGRP or OSPF, and then RIP and ISIS are also used, but not as much. Today, the only EGP in use is BGP. But please note that BGP is sometimes also used as an interior gateway protocol as well. There are two types of routing protocols. The first type is distance vector. Distance vector routing protocols send a full copy of the router's routing table to directly attach neighbors. Now, obviously this is not very efficient because it's sending information to a neighbor even if the neighbor already has that information. This can lead to slower convergence time. With slow convergence time, you then can introduce routing loops. The routing protocols that are considered distance vector are RIP and EIGRP. There are two mechanisms that you can use to deal with routing loops that Cisco wants you to know. The first is split horizon. This prevents a route learned on an interface from being advertised back out that same interface. I'll show you a diagram in a minute so this makes more sense. And then there's poison reverse, which causes a route received on one interface to then be advertised out the same interface with an infinite metric so that nobody actually wants to use it. But let's go ahead and take a look at the diagram so we can better understand the issue with routing loops and distance vector routing protocols, and then what we can do about it with split horizon or poison reverse. As you can see here, we have a basic point-to-point -point network, router one connecting to router two over serial interface, and then a network 192.168.1.0 slash 24, which is then advertised out serial zero over to router one. Router one then learns that route and places it in its routing table, as you can see here, with a metric of one, one hop. Now what if ethernet zero on router two were to go down and the network were no longer available? The problem with distance vector routing is that router one is going to send its full routing table over to router two. Well, router two does not know about 192.168.1.0 anymore. So when it receives the subnet advertisement, from router one of 192.168.1.0, it's going to accept it and place it in its routing table with a metric of two. And this is where we introduce routing loops. Router two will then forward traffic over to router one. Router th one thinks it can reach that network via router two, and traffic will then loop between the two routers. This obviously is not ideal. Now you've already learned about the two solutions to deal with that, and you'll need to know it for your CCMP exam. Split Horizon will prevent a route learned on an interface from being advertised back out that same interface, and then Poison Reverse, which causes a route received on one interface to be advertised out that same interface with an infinite metric. The next type of routing protocol you need to be aware of is the link state routing protocol. Routers send link state advertisements, or LSA, to advertise the networks they know how to reach. So they don't send the full routing table, just the networks they know how to reach, and only when there is a change in the topology. They only exchange full routing information when two routers initially form their adjacency, but from there on out, it's on a need-to-know basis. The routing protocols that are link state routing protocols are OSPF and ISIS. 
And the final type of routing protocol you need to know is path vector. BGP is path vector, and it includes information not just about the neighbor, but the exact path that packets take to reach a specific destination network. So when you do look at BGP advertisements, you can see exactly over what autonomous systems that traffic is flowing over. So you've learned a lot that's going to help you in your CCMP exam. And when you began this video, you probably thought you knew most of this, but it's always a great refresher, and I'm sure you've picked up quite a bit. So you've learned about the role of routing in an enterprise network and the different layers of enterprise network design. And then you learn the basic characteristics of routing protocols, which is really going to help you as you solidify your foundation and now you move forward in your CCMP studies. I'm sure you're going to do great and continue on with the video series and good luck to you in your studies.